in a previous video, we compared a 4x5 large format film camera to the Canon 5DSR, which is a full frame 50 megapixel camera. And the results that we were able to produce with the large format system were simply incredible. I loved the look and the feel of the images that that camera was producing. And I think that it's gonna be difficult to reproduce that kind of look with a smaller format system, especially with a digital camera. Now in this video, we decided to take it a few steps further, and this time we're going to be shooting with an 8x10 large format camera, and we're going to be comparing it to three digital cameras. So we're obviously going to be shooting with the Canon 5DSR again, but we're also going to be shooting with the Hasselblad X1D Mark II, and the Fuji GFX100, which is a medium format, 100 megapixel camera, this thing is incredible. I love the results that this camera produces because it's it's in a different league. The image quality is just stunning. And personally, I wanted to see what kind of results we could produce with the 8x10 and how it compares with these three cameras. So we're in Leeds City Centre. Well, not the city centre, we're at the docks in Leeds. We're going to take a few shots and uh, let's find out how these cameras compare to one another. Right, so I just want to quickly run through the lenses that we're going to be shooting with this time. Now, the last time we shot with a 200mm f2.9, which is a Dalmia Pentac. This time, we're going to be shooting with a 250mm Fuji non lens with an aperture of f6.7. So even though the aperture is much smaller than the 2.9 lens that we shot with last time, the equivalents are actually quite similar. So the f6.7 lens is similar to like an f0.8 lens on a full frame system in terms of depth of field, obviously not in terms of exposure. The camera that we're going to be shooting on is an Intrepid 8x10 camera and Intrepid were kind enough to send me this one and I'm really thankful because this thing is awesome. It's such an easy to use camera system that even I was able to operate it to some degree. Obviously I've had help from Adam so really appreciate that but uh, it's what's wonderful to me is the fact that you can go online and you can buy a brand new 8x10 or a 4x5 large format camera and you've got support after the fact. So that's just amazing to me. Now the lenses that we're gonna be using on the digital cameras are gonna be similar to the 250 mil on eight x 10 in terms of field of view. So they're gonna be somewhere between 45 and, between 35 and 45 mil in terms of uh, angle of view. So with the Fuji GFX, we're gonna be shooting with a 45 F 2.8, which is quite a popular lens. A lot of people love this lens. On the Hasselblad, we're gonna be shooting with the brand new 45 mil F4 lens. And this is a really, really sharp lens. I love the results that this camera or this lens is producing. So that's why I picked that lens. And on the Canon, I'm shooting with a slightly longer lens in terms of field of view, the 45mm f2.8 tilt shift lens, one of my all time favorites. So we're gonna set up the large format camera now and then uh, we'll take some shots with all of these lenses. We're gonna take a few shots wide open just to show you that depth of field that you can get, but we're also gonna stop down the large format lens and show you the kind of detail you can get once you shoot with a smaller aperture. So for the first set of images, we were shooting wide open on all four cameras, f6.7 and 8x10, 2.8 on the Canon and Fuji, and f4 on the Hasselblad. Now, even though the 8x10 lens has a depth of field which is equivalent to an f0.8 lens on a full frame system, the exposure times are still that of an f6.7 lens, which made it difficult to shoot with in these windy and dim conditions. Also, just to give you an understanding of the differences in size, 8x10 large format is so big that it makes medium format look tiny. What Annette is holding in her right hand is the size of 6x9 medium format and that is significantly larger than any digital sensor currently on the market and 8x10 large format completely dwarfs it. So here we have some images opened up in Capture One now and these are not the most creative images that we've ever taken. I mean, these are just test shots that we're using to compare all the different formats. So, you know, take it for what it is. And also we didn't have a lot of time with all the cameras and the weather was pretty bad. So now that I've got my excuses out of the way, let's have a look at the uh, images and do a comparison. So this first image, this was shot with the Fuji GFX 100. And if I zoom in one to one, you'll see that the sensor, the 100 megapixel sensor picks up a great deal of detail and the lens does a good job with uh, picking up 
uh, a lot of detail as well and uh, we took a number of different crops with each uh, of the cameras so this first image or this first crop is a little bit wider then this one a little bit closer and a third one with Annette sitting down at a weird angle again not the most creative shots but they're just there to uh, illustrate a point if I put the large format file next to the Fuji GFX, you can clearly tell that the uh, GFX is doing a much better job. I mean, the uh, large format file looks a bit weird. And the reason for this is because this was heavily recovered in post. Like it was very underexposed and that's why it's got this weird cast over it. And also we were shooting in dim conditions. So with that f, f 6.7 aperture, we were shooting at a uh, one fourth of a second or a quarter of a second with uh, the large format camera versus shooting at one forty fifth of a second on the uh, Fuji GFX and because of that we're getting a lot of motion blurs if we, if we zoom in even though this has a greater deal of resolution I mean this is like a 500 megapixel file and uh, you know you can zoom in a lot closer because of that but unfortunately because of the slower shutter speed the windy conditions it just didn't work and this is one of the problems with large format and that is that when you're not shooting in ideal conditions you're not going to get great results in fact you're going to get pretty terrible results and in these situations a digital camera is obviously going to be much better however if you shoot with a large format camera in better conditions you get some incredible results and uh, although this is not a fair comparison because this image from large format was clearly shot on a different day you can kind of understand the results that you're able to produce with a large format system and if i zoom back into this image over here you know just to just to help you take in the kind of detail and clarity you're able to produce with that you'll be able to see how that differs from a large format system and the large format camera for one produces significantly greater detail so we're not even zoomed all the way in by now with the large format file because this is about a 500 megapixel image and it picks up an incredible amount of detail i mean it's a big file so even capture one struggling a little bit but i mean look at the amount of detail and how crisp the large format file looks versus the uh, fuji gfx I mean, even around the lips over here, you can see the large format file, the large format image is doing significantly better. Like it's way sharper. You can see all the individual hairs much more clearer. It just picks up an incredible amount of detail. And you have to remember, the large format image has significantly shallower depth of field as well. I mean, look at the background over here. It melts away in comparison to the Fuji. The large format file it, or the large format camera is producing ridiculously shallow depth of field but also incredible amounts of detail even if you put the canon next to the large format file obviously the canon isn't going to do much better compared to the gfx and if we zoom in you know yes it is relatively sharp in comparison but you're able to pick up a lot more detail i mean in fact the 45 tilt shift from canon does look in my testing so far has been it's been a little bit sharper than the uh, the gfx lens uh both again shot wide open but obviously the large format file is significantly better the only camera system that did really well in this comparison was hasselblad i mean the hasselblad 45 it's an incredible lens and this is the reason why i picked this over the older 45 mil i mean that 45 millimeter lens is ridiculously sharp it's unbelievably sharp i mean it's kind of beating the large format lens and uh, the fujinon lens that we shot with on the large format system isn't the best of the best it's you know an incredible lens but the Hasselblad 45, I mean, surprisingly good. Look how much detail it's able to pick up. Look how sharp it is. And this is with no additional sharpen, sharpening added to it. It's just ridiculously good. Obviously, the large format uh, image does have the advantage when it comes to resolution because you can zoom in quite a bit more when you go one to one. And that's one of the benefits of large format. But the Hasselblad lenses, oh my God. I mean, look at, look at how crisp it looks. It's just an incredible lens. For the next set of images, we've got all four cameras side by side. So GFX over here, Canon over here, Hasselblad here, and obviously this is the large format. Again, we screwed up on the first set with the large format because of the conditions, and we had to go back and uh, reshoot the large format image. So 
you know, it's one of those unfortunate things because it's not like you can look at the back of a screen and know that you've messed up on the large format camera. So that's one of the downsides. I mean, it's not a convenient camera to shoot with, but when you get conditions right and you shoot things correctly with it, then you get some incredible results. So looking at all of them over here, I mean, we can't really compare colors because the lighting conditions are different, but we can compare resolution and detail. And, you know, the GFX, the GFX lens, the 45 left 28 it's not that sharp wide open, especially when you compare it to the Hasselblad. I mean, the Hasselblad is significantly sharper in comparison, and uh, even the Canon does a pretty good job too. Like the Canon lens, that 45 is sharper than the GFX, the uh, tilt shift lens. It's just that it doesn't have the resolution to be able to keep up with um, the uh, GFX 100, but the lens itself definitely picks up more detail. Like look at this area and look at this area. And then we've got the large format file and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so we can match the, uh, the angles a little bit or the sizes of uh, the subjects. And if you just look at that and look at all the other cameras, this just picks up an incredible amount of detail. And that resolution is just insane. Like this is still another 500 megapixel file and the scan that we're producing, 500 megapixels is on the low end of what large format can do. Like this is on the really low end. You can comfortably produce images and scans beyond the gigapixel with an 8x10 camera. So this is on the low end of what this camera can produce and even developing it. We didn't have it uh, professionally developed in a lab. We did it, you know, Adam did it in, in his house basically. So we're showing you the bare minimum capabilities of what large format can do. And even at this level, it's incredible. And uh, if I zoom in even more, you can actually see the large format camera and the buildings and everything that we you in, in, in Annette's eye. And that's just ridiculous to me because it picks up such a huge amount of detail that you can print massive, massive files with these kinds of cameras. So for these next set of images, we're going to be shooting the buildings behind us and this is going to be a good way for us to see the kind of detail we can shoot or detail we can produce between all the different formats. On the large format system, we're going to be shooting at f22, which seems like quite a small aperture, but in terms of depth of field, it's about the same as f2.8 on full frame. So this is one of the downsides of large format, and that is that when you need deeper depth of field, your exposure times can drastically increase. On the full frame system, we're going to be shooting at f2.8, but we're also going to be stopping the lens down to f8, and on the medium format, we're going to be shooting at between f8 and f11, just to see the kind of detail and clarity we're able to produce between all the three formats. Unfortunately, things didn't quite work out as planned because as you can see, the large format image has well and truly been ruined by massive light leak. And this is probably because someone must have opened the holder accidentally. And for that, I am really sorry. I really do apologize. But I decided to keep this as part of the comparison because it actually serves quite a vital point that I want to make. And that is large format 8x10 is extremely inconvenient, especially when you're comparing it to the Fuji GFX100. Medium format cameras with digital sensors or pretty much any digital professional camera on the market is going to be far more convenient to shoot with than an 8x10 large format camera. And that convenience has a lot of value because that's why most people shoot with digital cameras. But I guess that's the trade-off really. You're trading that convenience for the extra quality because even though we scan this with uh, an Epson V700, which is really on the low end of what this is actually capable of, we're still getting 500 megapixel files. And if you jumped up to drum scanning, then you'd get significantly beyond that and the quality would be much, much better, especially if you process the film in a proper lab and so on. There's just so much more quality you can get out of an 8x10 large format camera compared to any digital sensor on the market. And as you saw with the pictures that we took with Annette, once we took them in a 
proper environment, we were able to produce much better quality results, even compared to the GFX 100. What I will say is that if you are looking at potentially shooting with large format, then I would recommend 4x5 over 8x10, purely because 4x5 is much easier to handle, it doesn't cost quite as much, so if, th if things do go wrong, it's not going to be as expensive in comparison to 8x10. 8x10 is honestly just a pain to shoot with, and I really wanted to make this point and not just romanticize what film and 8x10 is all about. I wanted to demonstrate the fact that, look, things can go wrong. It's not all roses when you're shooting with film and it can become very expensive, especially with 8x10. So here's the thing, my iPhone is the most convenient camera that I currently own. It's so easy to shoot with, I can take it out, take a picture and send it to whoever I want. It's so easy. But it doesn't produce images that are anywhere near as good as the ones coming from the GFX 100. However, the GFX 100 is nowhere near as convenient. So as you're going up that ladder of image quality, you're trading conveniences in general to get that better image quality. And that's the same issue with large format. So when you're going from the iPhone to, to the GFX, large format is on the other side of the GFX when it comes to both image quality in terms of resolution and clarity because it does produce ridiculous amounts of detail and it's also incredibly inconvenient. It's just such an inconvenient camera to shoot with. There are so many things that can go wrong and honestly for that level of detail and resolution is it worth that much inconvenience for some of you absolutely absolutely you need or you want that level of quality or you enjoy shooting with these types of cameras and honestly i really love shooting with this large format camera it's just so incredible i absolutely i, I absolutely adore it but for many of you it's just not worth the hassle it's not worth the cost and the reason why I'm kind of coming at this with this angle as well is because I want to make it clear that this isn't just, you know, oh, look, it's a large format. It's so wonderful. It's so amazing. There are loads of downsides that you need to consider as well. But that's what large format is. And I think people who shoot with it have started to kind of appreciate that. And uh, what's really wonderful is the fact that a company like Intrepid are making it so easy and so accessible for people to be able to purchase these kinds of cameras. And they're not even that ridiculously expensive. Like they cost less than like a, a high-end APS-C camera. So that says a lot. You have to remember a camera system like the Fuji GFX 100 can cost somewhere between 10 and 15,000 based on the lenses and so on. So it's not exactly a cheap system to buy. So although large format film is expensive, the GFX will cost a heck of a lot more. Fortunately, you can rent the system for those odd projects or certain things that you want to work on where you want that really, really good quality, but you also want the convenience of the GFX. And that's where Hire a Camera comes in. And Hire a Camera have been incredibly helpful because they've been supporting our channel and uh, they're making these kinds of videos possible. So please do show them some love. If you go onto their website, they've got tons and tons of equipment, loads of different cameras available for a lot of different budgets, really. And I still rent equipment for those projects where I need that really high level of quality and I highly recommend that because it's just cost effective. Anyway, just want to say thank you so much for watching our video. Hit the like button, please subscribe, share this video and uh, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you.